keep absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. So the temperature, there's not temperature swing between the day and night. It's always hot. If you have grass surfaces, tree canopies, that is absorbed and released through evapotranspiration. So it's not as big of a factor in terms of heating the neighborhood. So it's very clear the northern part of the city has more greenery and the southern part has more asphalt. The hot spots are on the east side and the west side of downtown. Those are the most severe, um, probably because of less tree canopy, a more pavement coverage. And so we also know that those are the most vulnerable communities as well. So we worked with our Office of Equity to look at the equity matrix. And those census tracts are most impacted um, based on poverty levels and percentage of people of color. Certain parts of the city can be 15 degrees cooler versus some of these other vulnerable parts um, because they don't have that tree coverage. Well, trees, some of those trees have been here for like a hundred plus years. There are these huge oak trees that are providing that temperature difference and those trees are not going to grow overnight and that greenery is not going to grow overnight. So I was like, oh, well, this seems like an easy first step we can take in some of those communities that are really suffering from this, these urban heat islands. In terms of what cool pavement is, it's a different type of material. It's slightly more reflective. Our product goes down on an asphalt surface and reflects about 45% of the sun's rays. And instead of retaining that heat all day, we're reflecting it. We like to kind of describe that it's got the look of a concrete street and you get a lot of the cooling benefits of a concrete surface without a lot of the cost. When I started looking into it, they showed actual data that research had been done in Phoenix and also in Los Angeles. So I was like, oh, this actually might work. They have solid data on it. LA and Phoenix, they've proven that it works well. It's effective at reflecting the heat, cooling down the neighborhoods. What well, the next steps would be for San Antonio is to take it to scale, install it all throughout one neighborhood and then move to another neighborhood where they're located in more of like hot spots in the most vulnerable communities. Some pedestrians feel like when they're walking on these streets with this new reflective cooler pavement, they themselves feel hotter. And that's where I think we need to have more research. We're trying to keep that heat from being trapped in we've got to make that heat escape somewhere. And so it's reflected from that surface and back into the atmosphere. So you are going to experience some of that, that energy reflected back up, but as opposed to the alternative where you've got all that trapped into that surface and it's just slowly just lingering there throughout the course of the day. But overall, your whole experience is going to be that it's going to be much cooler because that, that heat isn't lingering in that pavement like it is with a, a traditional black asphalt. Greenery is proven that it helps an activity and being active and going out for walks and being able to see greenery. I think it's important that we make sure that those vulnerable communities that are having these urban heat island effects that can be 15 degrees warmer than other parts of the city have that same access to greenery. And if not, the city provides them with tools to combat that heat. There is a lot to discuss here, and we'd like to hear your opinions. Drop a comment below and make sure you hit subscribe to stay up to date with Solutionaries.